Kelly Paul has hopes of being the next first lady. The mother of three and former political consultant is the wife of Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul. She's also the author of a new book. It's called True and Constant Friends. Kelly, good morning. Hi. First of all, we want to acknowledge that you are freaking out in Studio 1A. You saw Reba. I did. And I'm just a few feet away, so I'm still shaking. And you saw the wonderful Jordan. Jordans. Oh. I know. It's been quite the day. All right. We're going to talk about your book in just a second, but we do have to point out your husband has been making headlines a little bit lately in our own studios with just Savannah. Lately? Just lately. <laughs> they had something that went down, and Chuck Todd asked him directly about it. This was his quote responding. People have come up to me on both stripes, and they say, thank goodness you stood up to the liberal media. Other people, maybe my wife, said count to 10 and let them spit out the question first. When you were watching that exchange, mm -hmm. what was going through your mind? Well, as a spouse, you always want the person you love to, to, to come off the best that they right. can. And so it's hard for me sometimes to see him being criticized because that's not who he is in terms of his relationships with women. You know, mm -hmm. his longtime surgical partner over 10 years was a female surgeon. They were in practice together. So when I read criticisms like that, I, I want him to obviously come off the best that he can. And um, I hate to be overly critical because now that I'm doing some of it myself, yeah. I realize how hard it is right. in the moment. Did you give him some advice after that? Did you say, okay, honey, here are some ABCs. Let's go through them. <laughs> do you do that? Sometimes I do. But as yeah. I said, the more I'm putting myself out there, the more I'm shutting up because I realize how hard it is. Yeah, you were, you had a big, there's a big article I should point out in the New York Times about you. When you see a big article like this in the Times, and they ask you a lot of questions about, obviously, your husband and the rest, how, there's a lot of pressure on you when it comes to answering those kind of things, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Because, you know, this is kind of an interesting world in politics yeah. because obviously, you know, I love him. He's my husband. And so it's difficult to be in a situation where I'm being asked about things that he's saying or doing. You had veto power over the whole presidential bid. At least that's what your husband has said. Should he run or should he not? And he said, my wife will be the one who will, she can put the kibosh on it if she wants. Now, what was it about um, this that made you decide this was the right thing for you and your family? You know, it's been a long decision. I wouldn't say there was one moment right. or one thing that happened that made us really decide. Obviously, Rand has been laying the groundwork for a while. We've been talking about it for a while, but it was a group decision. It certainly wasn't just mine. Our kids were involved with mm -hmm. it. And we wanted to make sure that, first of all, that Rand's ideas were resonating and that he could, I think he could make a difference, and I believe in that. And so I just decided, you know, in life, I think you regret sometimes the things that you don't do. Right. And um, I think that he's made a difference in the Senate and he could be great. So we're just trying to be brave and, and go for it. When you talk about your book, I mean, it's it's such a fun read. You and a whole group of your friends are, mm -hmm. are the book is kind of centered around. But it starts off with your grandmother, yes. who sounds like a fascinating woman. And she talked about um, just how amazing kind of New York was. And you didn't really know her, her profession. Mm -hmm. Fill us in on that story. You know, my grandmother was an extraordinary woman. She was very optimistic and extravagant. Yeah. When she would walk in a room, she would, you know, have a scarf on, and she was a great storyteller. And as a little girl, she was so inspiring to me. She would come down to visit from New York, and she would bring me all these fabulous old things yeah. from New York. And it wasn't until I was probably 14 or 15 that my mom started really telling me just how hard my grandmother's life had been. I mean, she had to quit school at age 12. Yeah. She fled extreme poverty in Ireland uh, and sailed to the United States alone as a teenager in order to find work, to send money home to help her family. And her first job was as a live-in maid for the founders of the Saks Fifth Avenue stores. You're kidding. And I think that's really where she developed her love of fashion and home decor because she worked for a very wealthy family. Well, there's a great saying that says, like, behind every strong woman, there's a stronger woman. And you can read all about it in your book. All your friends share incredible stories, and so do you. Thank you for coming to see us. Thank you. We really appreciate it. The book, again, is called True and Constant Friends.